Hey, good morning, everybody. How do you like your new digs? Right? I, uh, I was teasing that if Andy's message isn't really that great, we'll just shut her down and play bingo. So make sure you... I already know how to play that thing. So uh, anyway. And also, uh, I guess you could place your orders with Andy while he's up here, uh, like cheeseburger or fries, whatever. No, we're really thankful for this space, um, the VFW, so we can have it as long as we want. So I figure we will uh, we probably stay here until we outgrow it. So we're pretty excited about that. It is nice and patriotic. Uh, the guy that opened up for us today, they're, they're going to give us a key and we're going to uh, have kind of the run of the place. Um, but he said that a, a year or two ago they had some kind of chemical fire and it like burned everything up so they got to remodel the place. So that's why it looks so nice. But anyway, so we're really thankful for it. Um, kind of let you know what's, what's going on. We're going to have a, a, you know, a little bit of music. We don't have a live band yet, but we will at some point. So hang in there with us. Um, Dave's going to lead us in communion, and then Andy's going to give us a message. Um, and then, uh, Bill, I don't know if you know this or not, but you're closing in prayer. Did you know that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I might work on that. Well, listen, let's open up in prayer, and uh, we'll, get, we'll get going. Father, we do, um, we do love you so much, and we're thankful for the journey that you've given to us. You've provided all along the way, um, and uh, we're just trusting you to uh, just do your work here. But God, we want you to use us. Um, you know, give us a heart for service. Give us a heart for, for people. Um, God, bring, bring us people that need the Lord and need to be ministered to. Um, and we're just, it, we're, we're not the ones doing it. You're, you're doing it, God, and, and we just want to serve you in this way. Um, help us to be faithful. And God, I just want to thank you for your mercy and grace um, in our lives. And we pray that you, uh, you bless this time that we have here, that you would be glorified, that you would give Andy the, the words that you want us to hear, to challenge us to be, to be holy like you are holy. And we pray this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. While we were going through that, I couldn't help but think of, I'm going to read some verses for you. In Revelation chapter 5, it says, Then I looked and I saw a door standing open in heaven, and the same voice I had heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast. The voice said, Come up here, and I will show you what must happen after this. And instantly I was in the Spirit. And I saw a throne in heaven and someone sitting on it. The one sitting on the throne was as brilliant as gemstones like jasper and carnelian. And the glow of an emerald circled his throne like a rainbow. Twenty-four thrones surrounded him, and twenty-four elders sat on them, and they were all clothed in white and had gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumble of thunder, and in front of the throne were seven torches with burning flames. This is the sevenfold Spirit of God. In front of the throne was a shiny sea of glass sparkling like crystal. In the center around the throne were four living beings, each covered their eyes front and back. The first of these living beings was like a lion, the second like an ox, the third uh, a human face, and the fourth was like an eagle in flight. Each of these living beings had six wings, and their wings were covered with, uh, with their eyes and uh, inside and out. Day after day and night after night, they kept on saying, I think they were singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the one who was, who is, and who is still to come. I think it's going to be awesome when we get to heaven. We're going to hear that over and over and over again. And we'll be worshiping the Lord, singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the one who was, who is, and who is still to come. Amen. We're going to celebrate communion. doing communion and not the message, but somebody was foolish enough to put me first. So <laughs> if, I, if I go overboard, Andy, you can take the old stage hook and just kind of pull me <laughs> off after 30, 40 minutes or so. But I love communion. I always have. I love the power of it. Uh, I love the meaning of it. I love the fellowship with God and with, with you with, uh, that we have when, when we take communion. Um, I'm going to read the scripture first so the words can just soak into you. I think they're so wonderful and so powerful out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. 
and then I'll have a few comments, hopefully just a few, uh, and then we'll partake together. Paul says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. You know, something I just learned, I just realized, Paul wrote this, the book of 1 Corinthians, before the Gospels were, were written. So Paul said, I received this directly from the Lord. He didn't receive it from something that... Uh, that, that one of the gospel, one of the uh, gospel writers said he, he received it directly from the Lord and said, God told you told the church to do this and do it in this manner. So that was uh, uh, that was something new to me. Um, so the purpose of communion, uh, it's uh, it's remembrance. Uh, the Lord Jesus said, do this uh, to remember what I did for you. And what it means for you, uh, and but also it was a looking forward. It said, as often as you do this, you're proclaiming the Lord's death till He comes back. So we're looking at what the Lord did, and we're looking forward to the fact that He's coming back again someday. Mm -hmm. And every time we celebrate communion, uh, we affirm that uh, those things uh, to one another. Uh, so it's a it's a wonderful thing. Another thing that that kind of jumped out to me this time is. Uh, God never tells us how often we're supposed to do it. He said, well, as uh, Jesus said, as often as you do it, do it in this manner. But he didn't say how often. Uh, so I think it's definitely quality over quantity is what Jesus had in mind. He didn't want it to turn into another dry ritual. Like, well, once a week you do this. Uh, or, or once a month. Uh, uh, so as often as we do it, we need to do it in a very solemn and a very meaningful way and not let it turn into just another churchy ritual. Uh, so I think that's why he didn't give us a, uh, an exact time frame for it. Um, the disciples, of course, they had communion directly with Jesus. He was still there in the flesh. And that must have been a wonderful thing, sitting there and actually sharing, uh, sharing the First Lord's Supper with Jesus. We can't do that in the flesh but we're nevertheless supposed to have that same communion. So how do we do that now with Jesus gone? Well, he's given us his presence on this earth since he left. So our communion is supposed to be just like theirs, except for it's with the Holy Spirit uh, rather than with, uh, with, with Jesus in the flesh. So that's another wonderful thing that we can still do this until Jesus comes and have the same fellowship, the same communion, uh, but through the Holy Spirit. Uh, rather that, than with Jesus uh, in the flesh. In fact, it's even better because all around the world we can do this at the same time. Yes. We're not limited to time and space where, yeah. where Jesus happens to be at that time. Mm -hmm. So that's something that, 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 that we can do. Uh, Paul gave uh, a bit of an admonition here, and I'm sure you've heard this many, many times, uh, and we're not going to read that part, but he said, uh, look, uh, when you do this, don't do it in an unworthy manner. Because if you do, you're basically guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. So what did he mean by that? Well, I think what he meant is that we talked about our communion is with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is holy. Unconfessed sin and the Holy Spirit, don't they, they, they can't be in the same place. They, they don't peacefully coexist. You can't have... You can't have both. Yeah. So shame on anyone who thinks they can be filled with the Spirit when they have known unconfessed sin in their life because those things are like oil and water. They do not mix at all. So that's, I think, what Paul was saying. Make sure that you understand the meaning of this ceremony, the solemnity of it, and the fact that we are fellowshipping with God Almighty directly. So nothing, should, nothing that you know of should be standing between you and your fellowship with God when you take communion. Uh, 
unconfessed sin, confess it. Uh, broken relationships, uh, I mean, it's time to get those straightened out too. Anything in your life that you, that the Spirit is telling you, hey, this is an issue that you need to get resolved. You need to get it resolved before you take communion. So uh, we'll, we'll have a few minutes to, to, to do that. And you say, well, that's not very much time. No, it's not. But if you have unresolved issues between you and the Lord that, that can't be taken care of uh, now, well, then it's best for you not to take communion this time and wait till you get those things taken care of and, and, and take it next time. Uh, so I'm going to ask the guys uh, if they would pass out the elements at this time. And during that time, I'm going to ask that you do have a time of fellowship with that Holy Spirit that lives in us uh, and take care of anything he might be bringing to your attention. And then after that, I'll offer words of prayer for each element and we'll partake of them uh, together. pray for the broken body. We'll partake of that uh, together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the broken body of the Lord Jesus. Broken for us, bruised for us, Father. Uh, the, the means for our salvation, Lord. The only means for our salvation. Lord, we come before you today with pure hearts, with confessed sin as much as we uh, are able to do, dear Lord. Uh, and we thank you so much and, and we do remember what Jesus has done for us and that, that he's coming again for us someday. Uh, amen. Let's partake of the bread together. Dear God, we also thank you so much for the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, the Bible tells us clearly that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin, Father. It was necessary uh, to save us. It was, a, it was necessary to redeem us, Lord, there was no other way. And we thank you so much for that. Uh, we thank you for what Jesus did. And again, we look forward in expectation uh, for his return. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's partake of the drink together. We've done as the Lord's commanded. And I hope it was meaningful to you. Thank you, Dave. Great job.
we've been uh, I want to kind of take the next few weeks and talk about the this topic here of the fruit of the spirit. We've talked about the Holy Spirit a lot lately and have been studying about him a lot. And to, I thought it would be appropriate for us to look not just at the gift that we talked about last week or the, the gift that gives gifts, but now the fruit. You know, as a, as a boy, I grew up, my grandfather had a farm in Ohio, and it's the farm that I actually fell in the pond that I've told you guys about and how I was pronounced dead. And that, that place has a special meaning for me as I spent a lot of summers up there and spent a lot of time with my grandfather. But one of the things I remember was on the hillside, Coming down, he used to have this huge tire swing at this huge, huge oak tree. And just below that tire swing was the creek at the bottom, or crick as he called it. <laughs> and on the hillside going down between that tire swing and the creek was a bunch of vines where he grew grapes. And he got into that after he had retired and kind of really enjoyed growing those grapes. And I remember as a boy watching him in the fall after the grapes had come off and, and he'd kind of... I hate to say harvest because there wasn't that many grapes, but there were some grapes there. After he'd gotten them all off, he went through and he pruned those things down almost to the ground. And there was vine or there was wires going between posts that they would grow and crawl on. But I remember watching him that first time doing that as a little, I mean, teenager, and thinking, man, he just killed those things. There's no way they can grow back after that. How's he ever going to get grapes to grow back? I mean, they're. It's like you can't hardly see it above the, the grass and everything on the hillside. And I, I thought they would just be dead. But every year they would come back and they would grow up and around those wires and those poles and grow up and there would be grapes there every year. And Jesus used the illustration of the vineyard, grapes, planting, harvesting, and, and he really used fruit a lot in his teaching and in his stories. So I want us to look in Galatians chapter 5, uh, verse 16 says this. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. That word guide means to walk with or to follow. Let the Holy Spirit walk with you. Follow him. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. Have you ever felt that in your life? The constant fighting between what you want to do and what you know you should do, or what you know is right and what you would really like to say to that person or do to that person? <laughs> Have you, do you feel that, that tension? And so there's these two forces constantly fighting. So it's, the verse continues and says, So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed, and that word directed means to lead by accompanying to a place. When you are being led by someone, you're being accompanied by someone going to their, taking you to this place. We're being directed to this place by the Spirit. You are not under the obligation of the law of Moses. So when we are being led by the Spirit, when he is guiding us to the place that he wants us to go, we're not under the law. When you follow the desires of your sin for nature... The results, the results are very clear. Here's what the sinful nature wants to do. Sexual immorality, that's sex outside of marriage with anyone or anything. Impurity, that's unclean morals. Lustful pleasures, that means an unbridled lust. Idolatry, and we don't think of idolatry much today of bowing down and worshiping idols, but the word literally means putting anything before God. The next one, sorcery. Well, surely we don't have to deal with that today, but the word sorcery is actually pharmakia, which is where we get our word pharmacy from. And it's literally the word to be, uh, to be uh, it has to do with magical arts, but it also has to do with intoxication, being under dr the influence of drugs, the pharmacy, the drugs in us. Hostility or hate, quarreling, arguing, uh, jealousy, outbursts of anger. That's pretty self-explanatory. Have you ever experienced that? Selfish ambition, or being totally focused on myself. Dissension, or sedition. Division. Division is a divisive activity and even has to do with heresy in the words that's used there. He continues the list. Envy, or having ill will towards somebody. Drunkenness, being under the influence. Intoxication. Wild parties, 
That wild parties has to do with the carousing is one word that could be used. It's translated in some other translations as orgies. So in this, this is what the flesh is like. He says, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I've done before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the person who's not going to have a relationship with God. If we can live in that kind of a lifestyle, unconfessed sin, as Dave talked about, without the conviction of God in our life or without his uh, loving pull back into a relationship with him, then we won't inherit God's kingdom. That's, that's not saying that we're not going to struggle with some of these things. Because let's face it, every one of us have struggled with hostility or hate towards somebody at some point in our life. Or quar quarreling. I can't even hardly say it. Arguing. You ever get into an argument? Some of you might have this morning on the way. <laughs> but does that mean because I did that I won't be a Christian? He's not talking about our, our salvation here. He's talking about living in the kingdom realm. This is the will not inherit the kingdom of God. He uses the same words in Matthew chapter 5. And it's talking about having kingdom power here on earth. That's walking in the power of the spirit where he gives us the power to do God's will here on this earth and to follow after him. So he gives us the fruits of the flesh, and then he flips the coin and says, now, here's the fruits of the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit. Now, this is really interesting, and I never really saw this myself until this week. But we always talk about the fruit of the Spirit, and then we give this whole list of what these fruits are. Did you hear what I just said? Fruit, and then fruits. We use the term plural. But in the Scripture, it's one fruit it's singular it's the fruit of the spirit it's a singularness it's this holiness it, it, it shows up in different ways and manifests itself in many ways but the fruit of the spirit comes from holiness and as i follow after god he produces the fruit in my life that manifests in these ways love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control now, the thing we have to be careful of is not to say, well, I've got this one, and I'm, I, I've got peace, but my patience is struggling. <laughs> Kindness I do okay with. Goodness, eh. Faithfulness got that one. Uh, never cheated on my wife or cheated at my job or stole anything. Gentleness, eh, okay. Uh, I'm so-so I'm there. Uh, Self-control, yeah, I got that one. And we judge ourselves by each one individually. And that's when we're splitting it up in our mind as the fruits plural of the spirit but that's not what the bible says it's the fruit and the fruit produces itself in different ways it, it manifests and we're going to talk about these manifestations over the next few weeks that verse ends that says there is no law against these things those who belong to christ jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature that's the fruits of the flesh we've nailed those things to his cross and crucified them there since we are living by the spirit let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited. You know, when we've got these things in our life, when we have the fruit, we've got the goal, we're, we're following after God, we have holiness in our life, and he's manifesting these different areas of our life with all of these, what we would call fruits in our life. Let's not get conceited about that. Let's not have this empty glory like we did this ourselves, or like we're better than somebody else. And let's not, he goes on to use the word provoke or to compete with. Let's not get proud about it. Let's not compare ourselves with everybody else and, and see how much better we are and how further down the road we are than everybody else. Or be jealous of one another. Don't be envious because somebody else is further down the road than you. So don't get prideful and don't compare yourself to anybody else. When I read this again this week, there was something that, that just absolutely jumped out at me, and it has to do with our connection with the Holy Spirit and God, who is God, the Holy Spirit, God. Our connection with God is what produces this fruit in us. And that word connection there is very, very important. And while I was studying this, God kind of drew me to a parallel passage, and it's in John chapter 15. John 15 verse 1 says, I am the true grapevine, and my father is the gardener. Again, this is talking about fruit, grapevines and the gardener. It says, he cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit. 
Now, first we need to understand in here that Jesus is talking here about people who are a part of the branch. So if I'm a part of the branch and not producing fruit, he's talking about me. Does that mean that I'm a Christian or not a Christian? If I'm a part of the branch. You're yeah, so he's talking to Christians here, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to understand that first. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do not bear fruit so that they will produce even more. Kind of like my grandpa's grapevines, cutting them down like he did. He said, you have already been pruned and purified by the message I've given you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. And this is the key to the fruit of the Spirit. This is the key to the Christian life is remaining in him, and he'll remain in us. For a branch cannot produce fruit, even if it's severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Fruit comes from our connection to the vine. Fruit comes from our connection with God. Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I am them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. That makes it sound like the branches that get cut off, remember the branch had to be attached, so it's someone who is a Christian, it gets cut off and gets burned. And some people would say, well, there it is, man. These people, This isn't talking to Christians because this is talking about going to hell. But this is not talking about hell. This is talking, again, to saved people. But what it's saying is we'll be cut off because we're worthless. We're not producing any fruit. There's no kingdom power in the life at all. So why would God continue to pour into us if we are not going to receive it and bear fruit? We, can, we're, we are cut off. But many times the reason we're cut off is it's because of us cutting ourselves off. We're not walking with him. We're not abiding with him. He goes on in verse 7 says, But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you will ask anything you want, and I will, it will be granted. Now, I have to be honest. I struggle with that verse. Because that's a prayer of promise, and it's in God's word. So all I can say is, I believe it because it's in there. But I struggle with that. When I, If I remain in him and my words remain in you, then you can ask anything you want, and it will be granted. Seems like a blank check from God. <laughs> I struggle with that because I always want to say, Well, I've got to do this, this, and this to qualify for God to hear my prayers. You ever feel like that? Well, God's not going to listen to me because... But here he says, if I'll remain in him and his words remain in me, that we can ask anything and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. Now, all that, I just want to point out a couple simple things and then we'll be finished this morning. Here's the first one. Our fruit production is directly linked to our connection with God. If we're going to produce fruit in our life, if we are going to have the fruit, singular, the fruit of the Spirit in our life, that's determined by my connection with God. Am I abiding in Him? And as I abide in Him, He produces the fruit in my life. So it's come directly linked to my connection with God. Here's the second one. The amount and quality of fruit is directly linked to my connection with God. You see, if I'm not walking with Him, if I'm not abiding in Him, then I'm not going to bear fruit. And if I'm doing it here and there, I might have a glimmer here or there of fruit in my life, but it's not going to be lasting. So it's directly linked to my connection with God, me and God. Am I abiding in him? Am I allowing him to abide in me? Are we grafted together closely? Here's the third one. The power we have in the kingdom realm is directly linked to our connection with God. This is the rule. There are exceptions to every rule. And last night I was laying and thinking about this and, and I talked to a friend and I, I asked him, I said, what do you think about this? He said, well, I agree with you. He said, but there are exceptions. I said, yeah, and the one that came to mind was Samson. Samson was a man who didn't really walk with God, I don't think very closely, but God poured power out on him for a specific job. But as a general rule, if we're going to have power, if we're going to have kingdom power, walking with God, being able to influence others, being able to pray and see God answer prayers, being able to watch God do miracles and use us for those kind of things, then we have got to be connected to him. Here's four. The victory we have over the flesh or over sin is directly linked to our connection with God as well. Remember, the, the works of the fruit of the flesh versus the fruit of the spirit. If I want the fruit of the spirit, I've got to put to death the fruit of the flesh. I've got to put myself on the cross, just as we read in Galatians. So 
my victory over my flesh, the victory over the fruit of the flesh, the sinful nature that's in me, is directly linked to how closely connected I am to God. And then the last one is this. Our connection to God is completely determined by us. It's my choice. Remember last week we talked about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the gift from God who gives gifts and fruit for us. He's the one who gives the gifts. But can I tell you, Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not push himself on anyone. Just like God will not push himself. Jesus will not push himself on us for salvation. We have a choice. We have a free will. And we have to choose. He'll never force himself on us. So our connection to him is determined by our surrender and our desire to be connected to him. So as we get ready next week to jump into these specific fruits that manifest out of the fruit, I want us to think about our own lives and say, is that there? And I want you to think, I want you to stop and I want you to examine your own life and say, okay, then why, is it, why am I struggling in this area? Is it because of what? Is it because of my connection to God? How closely am I connected to him? Am I walking with him every day, reading his word? Am I spending time in prayer with him? Am I, is he my first thought, my last thought of the day? Is he my everything? Because that's what's going to determine the fruit in our life. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the fruit that you'll produce in our life. Help us to be totally connected to you. And not allow the things of this world to distract us because there's so many distractions. So, Lord, the choice is up to us. You're not going to push yourself on us. We get to choose how connected we are to you as, as the vine that has been brought in and grafted in to the branch. You want to flow through us to produce fruit. So help us to be completely surrendered to you, completely tied into you, and allowing you to flow through us. We're the limiter. So help us to, to take that governor off and to allow your spirit to flow through us in ways we never could have imagined before. Not so that we can get any praise or honor or glory, but so that we can turn it around and give it back to you and say, look what God has done. So that we can lift you up so that all men will see and be drawn to you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before we finish up, I want you to, we'll probably kind of make this kind of our thing. I want you, to, in just a moment, I'm going to pray again. And I want you to ask the Lord, is there somebody here today, or maybe somebody that you should go to today, that needs to hear something from him? Ask him, if, if, is there somebody here you want me to say something to? Is there somebody here who you want me to pray for? Maybe God will bring a verse of scripture to your mind that you would say, and it might mean something to them that you could have no idea that's the Holy Spirit flowing through. We've got to remove that limiter, that governor off to allow him to be able to do that. So I want you to ask him, Holy Spirit, is there somebody here this morning that you want me to say a word to? I guarantee you this. It, he's not going to tell you to say something unkind. Okay? He's not going to tell you to be mean to somebody or point out some sin in their life like an Old Testament prophet. That's, that's not what this is. The, the, the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us are for our encouragement, our edification, so they lift up. So ask the Lord, is there somebody here you would like me to say something to? So it might be just a word. It might be a, a scripture. It might be him say, hey, just pray with them. Give them a hug. Tell them you love them. But I want you to ask him to show somebody here for you today what he can say through you to them. Okay, so I'm going to pray, and while I pray, I want you to ask him, I'm going to ask him, and then Bill's going to come and do our closing out, okay? Lord, we thank you that you still speak, that you're the same God, as, the, as we sang about earlier. You're the same God. You don't change. Yesterday, today, forever. And as you spoke through people in your word, you still want to speak through people today. We want to be that available person so that you can use us to encourage another brother or sister. So Lord, show us who you want us to say a word to today. I don't know what it is. I don't know who it is. But show me who you would like to say something to today. 
and help me to be an encouragement and available so that that person can grow closer to you and be, to be encouraged, to be sharpened for you. So Lord, show us, speak to us, allow us to encourage one another with a word from you. We ask in your name. Amen. Bill? Thank you, Andy, for the word. Appreciate it. Uh, I don't, before I pray, uh, you know the Holy Spirit. We've talked about the Holy Spirit a lot. And uh, uh, some of the things that you said today, too, uh, I struggle with, too, you know, uh, talking to the Lord, you know, about things. And uh, just this last week, uh, you know, I've got a lawnmower business since I've retired, and I, I do that, you know, to supplement my uh, retirement <laughs> so that I can play. <laughs> you know? But anyway, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit has given me power when I pray to stop the rain. Uh, just this week, uh, look how rainy it's been, you know, and uh, it's, it's happened with me more than just once a week. You know, I'll be down in Olathe mowing and the sprinkles will start. And I prayed, I said, Lord, let me please finish this day and get the mowing that I need to done, mm. done. And the Holy Spirit, he hears my prayer. I get down here to Baser or Bonner or somewhere else and it's not raining. And I get, so, you know, he gave the power to uh, Elisha and some of the other prophets to stop the rain. We have the same power today to, you know, that God allows us to do that, and he's done it for me, things like that. The main thing that I struggle with is when I pray for my loved ones, and, uh, you know, Lord, why don't you intervene on their behalf, you know, and show them that they need to change their lives and, and repent and turn to you, and it seems like that prayers don't get answered, you know, it just seems like Lord, when are you going to do this? Uh, you know, and so those are the things that I struggle with, and I'm sure you guys do too. And but we still got to be faithful in those prayers, and sometimes God's going to answer those down the road. Who knows when? But uh, got to be faithful in them, and uh, just keep praying for our loved ones that God will intervene. That's like you know, I don't know about you, but I've had friends that talked about free will, you know, and they get off on the, you know, God uh, elected so many to be saved, and he chose, he, he did choose us, you know, he did choose us, you know, but man, when you see uh, your loved ones going down a road, and, you know, you pray for them, but their free will is overriding your prayers, it's just, I, I don't, I can't wrap my head around that sometimes, you know, and so, uh, but just be faithful, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord will give us that power. He does it. He stops the rain for me. If he can do that, he can answer those prayers for our loved ones too. Amen. So Amen. let's pray. I got to do a little preaching too. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Father, just thank you for your word, uh, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you... Uh, gave your son to die for us. Thank you, Lord, that you offered heaven for us, Lord. And Lord, as we go throughout our lives in this world, Lord, we see the wickedness going on every day. And if you're not coming back soon, Lord, I, I don't know, but it just seems to me that you are with everything that's going on. Help us, Lord to be that light in this world, Lord, and share our faith with others, Lord. We're the ones that you're going to use to reach the lost. Help us, Lord, to speak up for you, to live our lives holy, to allow your Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us, Lord, because sometimes we go down those paths, Lord, we let the old nature creep in, we let envy and hate creep in, lust come into our lives, and and we walk in sin, Lord, and like Andy said, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, and he separates from us when we do those things, Lord. 
Help us, Lord, to walk with you. Help us to allow your Holy Spirit to guide us every day, Lord. And show us those power, Lord, when we pray. Help us, Lord, to see those answers come forth. Even the small things that you do for us, Lord. And that makes us become stronger in our walk with you. Thank you, Lord. Help us as we uh, start in this new ministry that you will just bless it. We don't know where we're going, but you directed us out here. You gave us this lit building, Lord, to be in it, to worship you. I just pray that we'll see an increase in it every week as we meet here. Open doors for us, Lord. Help us to tell the lost about you. Ask these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Did you, did you wanna, oh, I forgot to. Yeah. Oh. So we have been, we had talked, told you guys we were praying about what the next steps were. We kind of gave out those four options, and we were leaning towards three and four. Three being, um, or four being, hey, bud, you want to come up with me? Yeah. Okay, come here. Four being being a campus church of New City. And three, being kind of our own thing with them being a sending church. And after a lot of prayer and everything, we really feel like the Lord's leading us towards number three, um, where New City will be a sending church to us or, or like a, a sister church that helps us and they'll be sending us out and kind of thing. But we'll be our own autonomous church. So we are going to start the ball rolling, uh, getting everything going for that. And we've kind of been praying about a name and, and feel like, Here's one. Here's the one we're praying about. I want you to pray about it this week, and that is, I told you, I've, the Christian life's all about faith. So, we've been praying about the name Faithway Church. Um, so I want you to pray about that with us this week, and we're we're beginning the process. We got some paperwork to file, and uh, got a lot of things that are going to be going to uh, to get this going. So it's exciting what the Lord's doing. We're not at the point of launching the church yet. We're just kind of starting off. Our Sunday mornings, like our Sunday nights, just a little more organized and and worshiping together. But we'll we'll get there very soon. So, yes, please, you may go to mom. Yes. <laughs> so that's what we're where we're kind of at on that. So. <laughs> All right. Did All right. I say everything you wanted to say? All right. Awesome. God bless you guys.